Hi, I'm Scott Campbell. Welcome to my window painting tutorials. Lesson 87, Tienda Mexicana, Part 3. Tortillas calientes recién hechas de puro maíz. Well, I got an early start and I'm uh, heading towards the job site. This is my third and final day. And um, I'm excited. I saved the best part for last, the characters. Well, time to get started. When I do all the characters like this, what I try to do is, um, is uh, start with the lighter colors and just go across the whole store and do all the yellow at the same time, do all the red at the same time, do all the pink at the same time. It makes it more economical. We got Mr. Uh, corn Tortilla, Tommy Tamale, Carry the Cake, our little girl, Mr. Pig, and a bull. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this light teal. This is uh, gonna be a bowl of menudo. And then the dress here, it's going to be white. Sometimes I don't go all the way up to the line. Like this purple is still wet, so. Because I'm going to outline it anyway, so. See that's wet right there, that purple? You can just go like up to it. I'm going to grab my confident yellow, get started with that. We've got that big Mr. Corn character. And then i got to do some yellow on the candles. I just love this yellow. It's such a great color. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. On these candles here, on the candle flames, you just go around the edge. And I didn't really need to do that, that blue on the, on the side. I just kind of, from habit. Because that's going to be orange. You're going to come back with an orange for that. And of course we have to do a little bit of yellow on the minion character. But I'm also going to do the, the outside of the, or the, the little star appendages or whatever they are called. The cones coming off of it. I'm going to do these yellow too. Yellow and purple are great. They're the opposite on the color wheel, so it's high contrast. Well, I'm finished with the yellow. I'll give it a little bit of a spritz and uh, go ahead and put it away. Look at all these pinatas. Now I'm going to take the kind of the peach color, put a little bit of it in here, and then also take a little bit of this golden brown, and I'm making a kind of a warmer skin tone for the little girl. So I've got this color, and it should work out really nice. It's a a flesh tone, but I made it a little bit warmer. It almost covers in uh, one coat, but it's good to go back and do a second coat. So far, so good. Now for the pig color, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and take some of this. This is the shadow I usually use on the, <clears throat> the flesh color. I'm going to take some of this and then I'm going to also take some of this color, the peach flesh color, put that in and uh, mix this up. This is going to be the color of the pig. It actually needs a little bit of white in it, so I'm going to add some white too. Actually what I have is this stuff here. It's a uh, Dollar sixty a quart. It's kind of an ivory color, which I'm gonna put in here instead of the white. Looks like it needs more. But this stuff comes in handy. These little mist tints and stuff. So there's the color color for the pig. Hey, thank yeah, you. Excellent. All right. Yeah. So you shop here? No, I'm just. Uh, 
I'm uh, just uh, watching those signs. Oh, you're, you're, a, do... you're a window washer? No, no. I'm just a business over there. Oh, cool. Yeah, so it's uh, how... I mean, it's, uh, how do you design this? Yeah, I just come up and what I do is I... Um, A lot of the jobs I get are uh, people that are just walking by and they see my work. Or uh, in this case, this guy, he's got a place next door called the Monkey King. And it looks really fun, but it's kind of like a, it's a kid's play area, like a gym they go into it. He, he also owns like a Kung Fu Academy next door. But anyway, he was really interested. So he's going to ch check out my YouTube channels and get back with me about doing some stuff. So I got my Pig Pink, which is a... Kind of like a flesh tone, but you can see the contrast, the difference between that and this. This is more warm and kind of brownish, and this is more red. Okay, I got the first coat of uh, pig pink done. Okay, I'm going to work on the cake now. Here's an example of you can do one coat, and don't I won't even have to put a shadow on this probably because I got the blue underneath. Just got to make sure it's dry. And uh, if you put it on a little bit thick like this, you can get away with one coat with a color like this because this has a lot of white in it. And you can kind of see a shadow. That might not be enough shadow, so I might end up coming in anyway with a darker pink and making a shadow. But sometimes you can do that. You can just paint the blue behind it. But I think because this has a lot of white in it, it might cover it too much. Since I have this uh, electric lime color, I'm going to go ahead and mix up just a little here with my blue. This blue I got, it was uh, I think $5 for this blue. Really good paint. It's a mist tint, but you don't want to use too much of it. But I want to make a green for the corn, the corn character, like a, a little bit darker green, medium green rather than a lime green. How are you? Good, how are you doing today? Good. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and lay down the green. The other thing you can do too, if you want, is to not go all the way to the edge like this. So when you do the black, if you're in a rush or something, you don't have to wait for the, the base or the coat to be completely dry. Well, here we're putting on Mr. Corn's clothes. <laughs> and this I'm going to do in one coat because this green's got a lot of um, a lot of white in that lime green color, that electric electric lime. Because I I decided to make the top of the cake just leave it white and the body of the cake white. I I uh, made the candles more of an ivory color for contrast between the white and that. I'm working on the tamale character and I'm using some of my red, the bright red, but I'm also using some of this really dark rose type color because I want to make it uh, not so dark red. Lighten it up a little. So this is the tamale character. So I got the first coat of uh, this guy done. This color actually, the tamale color, is actually perfect for the, the cake too, the shadow. And then I'm doing a little highlight on the cake too. Then I'll wrap a little orange around the flames. Well the cake character, he's got all the colors laid in, the highlights and the shadows. And then uh, I'll let that dry and work on some of the other characters and then when I come back I'll do the black on it. And then come into the pinata and use a little orange too. Well, I made a pretty big mess here, so I'm going to go ahead and put all my brushes away. I'm going to toss these in the, in the water, clean them up later. I was just in the store there, and look what I scored. <laughs> and they said take them all, but I don't have room in my freezer, so I just took three free bunches. 
These are great, these bananas. And what I do is I peel them, chop them in blocks, and then freeze them. And you could use them for banana smoothies, banana shakes, or even make banana ice cream. You take this and take some dates, a little bit of uh, water, and you can mix the dates up in a Vitamix with the frozen bananas and make an incredibly, incredibly tasty shake. So. Speaking of food, it's about lunchtime, so I think I'm gonna have a little bit to eat. Oh. Wow, it's kind of chilly today. Wasn't expecting it to be this cold, so I'm going to get in the car here, take a lunch break, turn the heater on. Anyway, check out, see what I brought for lunch. I like to bring lots of food, keep me energized. And I've got, speaking of bananas, <laughs> I bought three of my own, which I will eat. Let's see what else I got. I got an apple for dessert or a snack and <laughs> two oranges <laughs> so and then for my main meal I brought some beans I make my own beans I go to uh, I go to the store the bulk section I buy beans pinto beans red beans black beans garbanzo beans and I cook them in a slow cooker or a crock pot and what I add to like these beans I added some nutritional yeast and I don't use salt but I use a thing called spike put that in it and then also this uh, hot sauce called broca de face <laughs> it's got like ginger and uh, different things in it and garlic and uh, it's, it's real hot it's clear but anyway I put that in too so this is really delicious beans so I'm gonna have that and then also I brought, uh, God, I brought all kinds of stuff. I got Brussels sprouts too. These are so good. Oh my gosh. Mmm. I put, I put Sri Racha on them and more of the spike stuff. It's kind of a, it's made from a lot of different spices, but also it gets a salty flavor from sea kelp. And it's only got... It has a little bit of sodium in it, but it's really low, like 10 grams. And then also I found this stuff. I use these coconut aminos. It's kind of like uh, Bragg's aminos, but it's, um, it doesn't have, uh, doesn't have soy in it. It's not that I care about eating soy. I'll eat soy, but it's just not salty. And that's also a little bit sweet, but it has only 2 grams of sugar in it, so it's really low. But um, So the coconut aminos is a really good soy sauce replacement. And then on top of that, they, they have this garlic sauce that I got, which is even more low sodium, too. I mean, it's not real low. I think it's about 60 grams of sodium, but it's pretty good. But yeah, I soak them in that. Oh, they're hot, hot and sweet. They're really good. Nutritional yeast gives it a kind of a cheesy flavor, too. So, And then... <laughs> I got some still cut oats with strawberries and blueberries and raspberries. <laughs> if I'm still hungry after all that. All right, I'm gonna eat now. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and do the tamale character sombrero with this brown color. First coat is dry on the girl, so now I'm doing the second. All right, she's ready for the shadows and the highlights. Next, I go back to the girl, do some shadows. Now, you can barely see this, but I want it really subtle because when this dries, you will see it. It'll be a little bit darker. So you can see here, the um, shadow color is really, really subtle. You can barely tell the difference between it and the main color. And, uh, but even if the color is the same as the uh, flesh tone, it's going to be darker when it dries. Even now you can see on the face it's starting to dry, darken up. You also have to keep that in mind when you do the highlights too because they're going to get um, they're going to get darker as well. 